to address both high value assets but also local priorities. Um, and it, the information is coming through is that there's a real desire to have that um, partnership approach to regional planning and um, we also need to understand the impacts of market based instruments. I think that uh, the information role, um, there's a, a, a you know, government can actually um, provide technical and scientific information that groups and networks aren't able to um, develop for themselves and um, perhaps we're in a better position to assist with the sharing of information across groups and networks. Um, we also need better information from regional communities and uh, we need to actually respond in a way that maintains volunteer capacity given the challenging context outlined earlier. So in conclusion, I think that the, uh, the information gathering exercise that we undertook, which involved, I should have said earlier, 10 regional workshops, um, phone calls and an online survey, um, that, that there was confirmation that we've got quite a lot right and good information about what we need to do better. And the, the, the sort of learnings for me is that um, this is about recognising that groups and networks exist in their own right and have their own local priorities and purposes, understand that there are regional differences, understanding that there's different priorities for volunteers, groups, networks and peak bodies, um, establishing you know, better paths for local information to be fed up into regional and state planning and to be shared across, and um, recognising that local community priorities Sorry, we need to recognise local community priorities by adjusting policy setters, settings and um, streamlining government requirements. And finally, just really understanding those that we do have common goals and we should work to maximise those benefits and um, you know, build on the sort of existing mutual trust and respect that exists. So, um, and I, I just finally, I'd like to say that, that our information gathering exercise was, was really helpful and I think that it's something that, that um, a program like this, which has been going for such a long time, needs to do on a very regular basis to make sure that we um, continue to sort of rethink our policy design, its implementation, how we invest, and the way that we tailor service delivery and aspects of our role and expectations. Thank you. Peter Baldwin from Department of State Development, Western Australia. Just wondering if the surveys that you did um, included uh, getting in touch with farmers uh, and landholders who don't participate in, in land care at all, and um, you know, whether they contribute to, to the sort of lessons and, and broadening your reach? The, uh, this, this particular information gathering exercise was um, was not focused at trying to, to capture information from people that we don't normally interact with. Um, it was, it involved basically going to the, the groups and networks that already exist. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, a, that's probably something for a, another, another sort of piece of work. South Australia. Um, I detected in your presentation a slight scepticism about MBIs. I was wondering if you could um, just flesh that out a bit in terms of, I guess, what you see that the conflict is there and what perhaps what the attraction to government is in going down that particular path. And, and I guess a slight segue to the previous um, uh, speaker's ask, uh, uh, question. Um, so. MBI, I don't, I'm actually not, uh, I'm not critical of MBI, MBIs at all. I think that they're a really useful tool. Um, what I do think is that perhaps we haven't um, explored enough their um, impact on, the, or their potential impact on, on volunteer groups and, and, and work, because that, that hasn't been the point. Um, 
but clearly what we're hearing back from the land care groups and networks is that, that they, are criti they are critical of, of market-based instruments and concerned about the impact on, on the operation of land care groups and, and networks. So I'd like to understand that a bit better. So I'm, I'm really flagging it as an area where I think we need to do some more work and find out um, if we're using market-based instruments in a way that um, is, if, if, if market-based instruments can be used in a way that actually um, builds the capacity of local groups or, or doesn't sort of affect the capacity of local groups. John Fitzgerald from Vic Health. Um, I was just wondered whether you uh, were able to collect any information about whether the members of Landcare saw themselves change over time as a collective, and also whether um, they spoke of themselves as innovators, as contributing new ideas and new directions. Um, that's it. That's an interesting area for discussion. I, I, it, it would vary, I think, depending on the group and the network and depending on the, their location in the state. Um, one of the, the things that we've found through research is that land care groups do have a, a natural life cycle. Their groups are often formed to address a particular local issue or series of issues, and once that they've once sort of work has been done on those, they, they can go into a hiatus and, and, and not be terribly active for a while, but then re-emerge when there is a need for them. Um, in terms of uh, innovation, I think that uh, some of the, the networks, um, so for example, the Basque Coast Network is, is, um, is really uh, very innovative and is trialling um, stewardship approaches to land management, which, um, it, it w which, w which may then be sort of rolled out to other groups. So, um, I'm not sure if I've answered your question, but that's that's the, the sort of it's, it varies. Graham Phelps, Engine Parks. The the tension between the, um, the, the 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 asset based approach, the MBIs, and and what and the impact that land care groups saw on them and, and it seems to me also to be a bit of a tension between local priorities and, and centralised priorities. Is that also a tension between what's the outcome you're looking for? Is it numbers of volunteers involved in environmental work or is it significant environmental outcomes? And you mentioned in your, in your talk the issue with the Vegemite spread of having lots of activity but, but no outcome, no, no, no real environmental outcome at the end. And how do you, how do you reconcile those tensions? Yeah, that's, this is, I suppose this is for me the, the one of the kind of most interesting um, points that emerged from the information um, gathering exercise was that it really highlighted this tension between um, local concerns um, and uh, state priorities. Um, and both are valid and I think this is the challenge for government is, is perhaps in um, better understanding what those local priorities are. Um, it doesn't mean that we don't continue to invest in the, the, the key priority assets for the state. But um, I do think that, that there is a potential opportunity perhaps to, to work with land care groups and networks to um, communicate why these areas are local, um, why, why, they, you know, why certain areas are key priority assets and um, how their local um, work connects to them. Um, in some respects, um, whilst I sort of want to do a bit more work to understand the, the issue, it's possible that the, it's, it's just been all the way that the policy has been communicated. Um, and so there, it's, it may be a perception rather than an actual 